Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif Mercado, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 70, 70. That's right. Um, it is uh, Tuesday evening. Uh, nice, uh, nice night. Uh, very comfortable. Um, today consisted of mostly writing, uh, rewriting. Uh, remember, Yes, Yes, Y'all is released. Uh, March 27th, the end of this month, it has to go to press by March 23rd. So the books are written. There's three of them. They're full, full length novels. Um, almost, I don't know, 90,000 90, uh, 90, words each or whatever. Um, so that's why I did pretty much uh, all day today. Uh, I'm finishing up book one. And what's so crazy is that... <laughs> I'm at page for this page. Remember, I'm doing this on a different format, so there's less pages. So the book's normally going to be like 200-something pages, maybe close to three. Uh, But when you look at the pages I'm working on, I'm working on a full um, full full-size Word document with low margins, so it's only 100 pages. Once I get it formatted and it gets condensed into the the 6x9 that I usually do my books, uh, then it takes up more pages. That's how that works. Um, so I'm at, uh, I need 105 pages. I'm at 98. So I'm almost there. What happens though is when I go in to do a rewrite, so it could be a paragraph. It could be sometimes I could delete, if I catch myself deleting the whole page, I could go into something to read it and it's just not vibing with me. It sounds corny or I want to rewrite it, and I, I try, and I it, sometimes it gets. I look at stuff, and uh, I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't even need this here. I, I, the, there's this uh, this uh, f- um, this phrase that they they do writers that writers uh, do all kinds of writers, screenwriters, novelists, whatever. It's called "Don't be scared to kill your darlings," to kill your darlings, and what. It meant back in the days was when people added these extra characters that meant nothing. They were really cool characters. Uh, they did some really cool things, but they didn't really move the story forward. And what happens is you invest so much time into these characters that, <laughs> believe it or not, you get to know them. Even though you wrote them and you created them and you get to know them, you start to see what they look like. And, and, and they become this very... <sighs> Not even like an important part. It's almost like a puppy. A puppy really doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't do anything. They sit there. They look cute, but they don't really have a purpose, you know. Unless they're gonna protect your home, uh, but you like to have them there, you know. And that's what sometimes these characters are like. And sometimes you need to get rid of them. You need to just because it becomes confusing. It just confuses. It pulls back. It draws back. Because then, if you have characters, you have to make them talk and you have to make them move. And if they're not talking about anything that makes that that moves the story forward, or they're not doing anything that moves the story forward, then you have to kill them. You have to take them and get rid of them. Pull them out the book. A lot of times, I put them. I put them in a notebook. So I don't really kill them. <clears throat> I kill them from that story. But I don't totally get rid of them. I keep them in the in the book, and because sometimes the characters have like this three dimensional thing about them that I like, and I'm like, you know what? I want to use this character again. I've done that before. Uh, that I've taken a character from one book, killed them from that book, and put them into a another book, another story. Um, so, <clears throat> so. Uh, I catch myself doing a lot of that. And then also sometimes I don't add characters, but I might add lines. I might add some dialogue. Every year, I, st- I study a lot and I read a lot. And I study my craft a lot. I read magazines like Writer's Journal or Writer's Digest. 
Um, I've got tons and tons of books on the subject. Plus, I read other things. And then when I'm working on novels, I sometimes like to read novels. Now, mind you, I write novels. I don't really read them. Now, I have some. Novels are not the books that I keep unless it's, uh, um, you know, maybe uh, something that's uh, like a classic or whatever. But a lot of times if I buy a novel, um, I'll read it and I'll give it away or... Yeah, I'll just give it away. It doesn't, you know what I'm saying? The books I keep are more my reference books, you know, my how-to books and stuff like that. Uh, those are the books I keep, but novels, I don't, I'll just read them. The only novel set that I have now that's actually, I bought as like a collection is the Donald Goins uh, collection. So if you guys are not familiar with Donald Goins, Donald Goins, okay, came back, came around, he was around in the... I believe it was the early 70s. Uh, my dates are going to be all screwed up now. but And uh, he was a junkie. He was a junkie. And he went to prison. He was a thief as well. And um, and while he was in prison, he wrote books. He wrote novels. And they're small novels. Like, I look at these novels. I mean, they're tiny. They fit in the palm of my hand. Like, you put them in your back pocket. That's how small they are. But he has a whole collection. And they're real. Those are the legitimate street lit street literature or what they call urban novels that's what those things are uh one of the other, the other um writers you might be aware uh might be familiar with is like um iceberg slim um uh the new ones that you have that are out now is like wahita clark or um, uh kwan so you know you can look at kwan did like the book um, Animal and Wahida Clark. She writes uh, the books like um, uh, Thugs. She has like a Thug series, like you know, every thug needs a lady, and she has like a whole series like that, you know. Uh, and they're straight up uh, urban, you know, uh, urban novels, street lit. And um, I like to read those. Uh, what's what the, the interesting thing with those is they're very slangy, like. You got to really know the streets or have, you know, have some sort of uh, connection to the streets to really read these books because of the slang and some of the terms you you won't get it. It'll, and if you know, in a, in a story, in a book, if you if there's a word that you don't get that you didn't catch, um, it could throw you off because you'll while you're still reading the chapter, your mind will keep trying to process that word. And, and you can't read like that. You know, me, I have to stop. As soon as I don't know a word, I'm not familiar with a word, or I'm not sure of its meaning, I use Google. And I, I Google sometimes the most basic words because I want to make sure that it's in the right context. There's sometimes also that there's words that I use that I know they fit perfectly, but but sometimes I don't know the true meaning, and I, I want to know the true meaning before I use it. Um, so, but um, so a lot of times while I'm writing my books, I end up adding phrases. I might see something, and and the more I read, I learn. So what happens is when I revisit my books to do a rewrite, to do a rewrite, um, I end up improving it. But improving it sometimes means taking a line or two and turning it into 18 lines. Or taking 15 lines and totally deleting it. Or taking 20 lines and turning it into two lines. Like it could go either way, you know? So um, I don't try to write a lot just to write a lot. In fact, if I can take a sentence that might be like maybe a line and a half or two lines, and I can say that, and I can. Rewrite that sentence in just three or four words, I'll do it. I'll do it. Because that's really, um, that's what you want to do. Um, another thing also, like with my books, is I try to write in very plain and easy to understand language. Once in a while, I might use a word that most people don't use it, but it's not in the dialogue. It's usually in the narrative. So for you guys who don't know what the narrative and what the dialogue, so the dialogue is when two characters are talking to one another and the narrative is like the narrator, you know, you know, so John, you know, sat up against his, stood up against his car 
and watched across the street as his wife met up with her lover. You know what I'm saying? So that's the narrative, you know? So when it comes to the narrative, a lot of times I can write, um, I'll use certain words. I still don't get it sophisticated. Um, I don't talk sophisticated, so I'm not going to write like that. Um, I try to use as plain language as possible. But keep in mind, I work, I write in what they call first per person. So first person means that the character that I am writing about is the one speaking. He's also the one narrating. So it's like, it's not really, that's the third person where I just gave you, you know, John is standing on the car looking across the street. That's a third person. So I write mostly in first person. So I'll be more like, I stood against my car and I looked across the street and saw my wife getting in a vehicle with some strange guy. You know what I'm saying? So it's me. And then, so I went up, I ran up to her and I approached her, approached her. When she wrote down the window, I said, and then I'll go quotes, hey, what the fuck are you doing here? You know, whatever the case. And, um, but anyway, <laughs> please don't go by that writing there. Just that little... <laughs> A little piece I just created there. Um, I, I'm a little better than that, but I just want to give you a little example for those who are not uh, aware of um, or not familiar with how that whole process, how it works, you know. So, but um, but yeah, I, I mean, I love I love this. Uh, I'm excited to finish this book, really, so I can move on to the next one. I'll be real with you, you know. Now I, I mentioned before I don't use editors. A uh, couple reasons. Number one, they're very expensive. Okay, I've I've used them before, um, and I don't. I've never felt like I got my money's worth. I've never. I felt like I gave these people like free money, and they're expensive. So the last person I used uh, charged me nine hundred bucks, <coughs> and that was for uh, Freestyle for Life. <clears throat> and I never, I never used that copy. I saved it though. I saved it because I just thought it was a something to remind me. I put it in an envelope and I put. Do not use edited version. Pay 900 bucks for this bullshit, you know? So, um, I don't use that. Um, one of the things with my writing, I've mentioned this before to you guys, is I think of it like a live band. Think of it this way, okay? So, you go to a band, you go see a live band. If you go and you go and you follow this band on tour, they're going to be... Almost every show that they go to, if it's live, not pre-recorded, not like a freestyle concert, if it's live, almost every show you go to is going to be slightly different. Something's going to go wrong. Somebody's going to start too late. Somebody's volume isn't going to be high enough. Someone's wire is going to pull out of the amp. Something's going to go, you know, somebody's something. So, but this is the beauty of live. This is the beauty of live. So anyone who can, you know, go from beginning to end with no mistakes, say, okay, cool, you're cool, but you're boring also. So that's the beauty with live. And I take, and that's the beauty with plays. Plays, that's one of the, the things that attract people with plays. It's not about people do a play and it's perfect and it's the same thing every single time. No, a lot of times it's kind of cool to have some sort of variety, to really show the artist behind the art. You know, when they could take something and they can, there's a problem or there's a mistake and they could fix it and just keep running with it. Well, I feel the same way with the writing. I feel that when you read my writing, now maybe I'll get to some point. All right, first of all, I don't think I'll use an editor unless I'm signed to a, a major publisher. Because an editor wants to sell your book. So they're going to do everything they possibly can to make it really they're not going to change anything they're going to bring it out on you a lot of times what those editors do is they make corrections and they do notes on the sides then they send it back to you and they say listen this is cool but see if you can emphasize on this line a little bit more or um this 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 part is cool but you did not explain how the person died or this is cool but it needs to be a little more ghetto you gotta kind of doesn't sound angry enough so they'll give you those kind of notes that's what the editors do they'll send it back to you and then i go and i rewrite it so when you get that kind of editor you're getting a really really good editor but that's because they're being paid by the publisher and their job is to sell books a freelance editor however okay though 
it's nice if you sell books. I'm sure they would like you to sell books. Their goal is to impress you so that way you could pay. And I've done that and it didn't work. And and it's like they they took a straw and just like sucked out the soul from my from my writing. So now when you read my books, and this begins with my first book, which is Freestyle for Life, Freestyle, Freestyle Promotions, and now yes, yes, y'all, books one, two, and three. Every if you see an error, if you see a typo, if you see a grammatical uh, error, if you see anything, it was me, a 100% me. Now, errors and typos, I try not to have those, but they sneak in once in a while. But the beauty with my publishing situation is that I can update mine. So if I get enough respond, I always read my books again, and Angel will read my books and so on. But if and I ask people to be open, and if there's any errors or let me know. What I do is I take notes, and then I could go in and revise these for the next edition and then bring them up. So if you have an issue that has a couple of typos, you know it might be a valuable issue because it was the first, you know, the first, uh, the first edition, you know. Um, but uh, but that's how I do it, you know, and I I enjoy doing that. I think there's something special about that. Now, of course, you know, most people will want their stuff to be intact, will want it to be perfect, because what happens is when you don't, when it's not perfect and there's there's errors, it could kind of throw people off. They're trying to enter the story, and you know, I mean, we've all done it. We're getting into the story. It's good. All of a sudden, there's a there's a word missing, or they spelled the they used the wrong word, you know, or the word is, is spelled wrong, you know, and it could throw you off. It could throw you off. So that's the that's the toss up. That's the the little risk uh, that you take. But what it does with me, it does put me on my toes, and it makes me really want to focus and concentrate on my work. Um, and the fact that if and it's in its purest form. Now I don't need to put anybody's. Uh, credits on the inside because it's all me, you know. So, but um, but yeah. So anyway, so that's that's what I've been doing all day, and that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of this month. Uh, phone calls are coming in. I just I got a couple calls for Puerto Rican parades uh, or Puerto Rican festivals for the summer, so I'll be servicing those. Not sure who I'm putting on them yet. Uh, a couple club dates, a couple other dates. Um, it's cool. It's good enough. Um, I'll be good. Um, I'm really, really t- focused and, sis- and uh, excited about uh, finishing uh, finishing this book. So, And I have a bunch of other ideas, and uh, I'm trying to do spit out a book a year. Um, yes, yes, y'all, I did. I wrote basically three books in about less than a year, uh, but it took me a little more time to, you know, edit and rewrite and so on to put it out. But um, I'm trying to really... Uh, streamline my writing if I can finish a book in six months I could I gotta really be into it though like it has to my books tend to write themselves like I can I don't outline though there's nothing wrong with that I recommend some people need to outline sometimes I might outline if I have like a whole list of really cool chapter titles and so I might I might do that, but most of the time I'm doing what they call pan. I'm a pantser. Pantser meaning I write at the, by the seat of my pants. Like I don't know what's gonna happen. Like I could be writing right now, and I did not realize that suddenly somebody's gonna roll up on them and somebody's gonna get shot and killed. Like I don't know this is gonna happen. So when I write, I write as though I'm reading, and it's weird because it's almost like the book writes itself. Like I could type. I mentioned this before. I can type pretty much the same speed that I think. So I'm talking in my, I'm, I'm doing a dialogue in my head, and I'm typing at the same time. However, if you came and you stood over me and watched me, I'll be typing with one finger, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, but yeah. So anyway, so that's that's been the plan. Now um, I have a. Um, I got rid of quite a few pre-sales on the book, so anybody who is interested, go on my Facebook page. You'll see it advertised. Um, I know I'm not going to get a lot of people coming for pre-sales from the podcast, so and I'm fine with that. I really, I'm not trying to ship out a hundred books from from home. I'm not trying to do that, um, but because there's three books, so they're going to be pricey. 
Um, but if you are interested in grabbing uh, the three books for the price of two, uh, you definitely got to reach out to me. I do everything through Cash App. I can't do it through Amazon because they won't allow me to make that kind of deal. So it just won't work. Uh, there's no way of them processing. I mean, I mean there might be a way, but I'm, I don't know how to do it. And I'm not going to get into it. So um, plus not only that, if you buy it through Amazon, you're going to have to send it to me if you want them signed. So the only ones that I'm signing and sending are the pre-sales. So I'll sign each book um, from me to you. And um, yeah, and, and that's it. So you know, anybody who's interested in that, you know, uh, go, go check it out. If not, uh, if you want to wait, that's cool. Uh, March 27th, you know, figure March by the 1st of April, we should be up and running campaign should be uh, out there. So you'll see uh, the ads for the book and just make sure you get your copy. So, all right, guys, that's it for tonight. Uh, just want to reach out, say hello, talk to you for a little bit. Hope you guys are doing well. I appreciate everything. Uh, don't forget those likes, those uh, subscribes. Um, and, um, until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.